I want to tell you what I know about the Heritage Rough Rider revolver. Now, I have it disassembled right now because uh, I want to be want to be safe. Make sure, verify that the chamber is unloaded. I can see daylight. I don't see any brass, and I can see you. Can you see me? You know brass. See daylight. It's unloaded. We're safe. The revolver is reassembled. We are back in business. Now the revolver was introduced in 1993, and it's made by um, Heritage Manufacturing Incorporated in Southern Florida. And uh, they come in a uh, variety of uh, barrel lengths. Uh, this one measured from here, from here to here, uh, would be four and a quarter inches long. But they also come in three and a half inch long barrels. Uh, four and three quarter inch, six and a half inch, nine inch, and sixteen inch. I've also seen them online, sixteen inch long barrels with a uh, rifle butt stuck on the end so that it can actually be shot from the shoulder. That's probably a uh, new thing. I have never seen one sold in any gun store. Uh, and I have definitely seen these a lot in uh, several different gun stores, even uh, some of your bigger gun stores or sportsman stores like a, a sportsman's warehouse. Um, the gun is actually pretty solid. It weighs about uh, 34 ounces and uh, it's all made of uh, steel with the exception of the uh, palm grips of course. These are made out of wood. And uh, There's actually uh, a very very wide variety of uh, palm grips that you can choose from. Uh, you can find them uh, with lighter colors than this one. Uh, you can also find them with with a wide variety of colors, like, like a rainbow, let's say. And uh, they, they also come with different designs. For example, I've seen them with the uh, American flag on them. Uh, you can also get them with a uh, pearl grip, and even more so, you can even find them where the entire grip itself is shaped like that of a uh, bird head. Uh, the revolver typically comes with a uh, with a blued uh, finish uh, or a nickel finish. Uh, this one I think is a blued finish, and some of them will actually come with a uh, chrome finish, such as the bigger bores out there. And uh, it's pretty standard too for uh, these guns that have uh, fixed sights. You kind of see here. There's no way how you could adjust them, and reasonably so. If you were to take aim with the hammer in place, it's very hard to line up the sights to take aim. And you pull back the hammer, much better. You can actually see again. Now, I have definitely seen uh, some of these revolvers sold online with some adjustable sights. So, I really do believe that that is actually a uh, new modification on their end. Now, this is a uh, single action revolver, which means the hammer must be pulled all the way back so that the gun can shoot. Now you can see this, uh, the camera will focus. You can, there we go. You can see this texture here. It makes it so that uh, the chances of the hammer slipping from your thumb and setting off an accidental discharge is reduced, but it is not eliminated. Please always keep the uh, muzzle pointed in a safe direction so you can avoid this problem. The manual teaches that. Now there are four clicks to the hammer. The first one makes it so uh, the uh, safety can be set. The second one makes it so that you can load your gun. As you can see here, the revolver now spins freely. And uh, using the ejector rod, just line, just line it up with the chamber. There we go. See the ejector rod there? You can now push out your uh, shell casings one by one or a full caliber, or full cartridge, sorry, if, um, if you just want to unload. This is the uh, side gate, I believe it is called. Now the third cock, as the uh, manual puts it, is of no consequence. And the fourth and final cock means the gun is ready to be shot. Now the revolver comes with the safety. Let me put put it back in the first click. Safety right here. 
Uh, it's actually it's actually very unusual for revolvers to have safety. So this is a very unique feature for this one. But as you can see here, what you do is you flip it like this and you can see the red dot, which means the safety is off and now it's back on. The way on how the safety works, let me pull the camera all the way back. There's a, uh, I wish the camera would focus readily. Here we go. There's a barrier here so that when you pull the trigger, it keeps the hammer from striking this button here. Oh, come on, there we go. You kind of see, you kind of see how that works by this gap you see here. Now, you take now you take off the safety, and the gap and the gap completely disappears, and the uh, hammer hits the button, which sets off the uh, firing pin. And even though uh, this uh, safety is set to keep the hammer from striking or making contact with the firing pin, uh, the manual still advises not to carry a, a live uh, caliber or cartridge under the hammer when you are uh, when you're holstering. I really do think it's wise to heed to the instructions of the manual. Now. Now the uh, gun is chambered in 22 long rifle or LR, uh, and I think that uh, that is actually the most common caliber that Heritage Manufacturing makes their guns in. Uh, they do make a few that are actually chambered for bigger bores, such as 357 Magnum and 45 Long Colt. And for a time, they actually did make like a 32 caliber uh, variant of some sort. I'm not sure which one specifically, but that one has been uh, discontinued. When and when did they stop, start and stop making them? I don't know. Uh, now, I haven't seen any of the bigger bore Rough Riders that I know of, and most of the ones that I've seen online are chambered in 22 LR. And additionally, uh, uh, people that I know who have a uh, Rough Rider have them in 22 LR. Now the uh, manual does confirm that uh, 22 small and 22 long, which is not to be confused with the uh, 22 long rifle, can also be fired uh, through through this cylinder. And this gun can also shoot 22 Magnum, but there must be a completely different barrel taken out and reinserted into this in order for the gun to shoot 22 Magnum. Now let's stop for a moment and uh, I'll tell you the very little that I know about the differences between these uh, 22 rim fires. Now here I have two different uh, 22 rim fires. Uh, this one is a 22 LR which is more which is the most common and uh, this one is a 22 short. Now if I had a 22 long, it would be between both of these. And besides the, uh, sorry about that. Besides the, uh, the lead bullet here and the um, copper casing here, you'll note you'll also notice that notable differences are the long rifle is just slightly is notably bigger than the. Um, in the short and uh, but when it comes to diameter the long rifle is just slightly bigger now the uh, 22 short which is camera would focus has been around since uh, 1857 I believe so it's really been around for a long time and then uh, after that was made uh, the 22 long was based off it and then uh, I don't remember which year that one came out uh, and then, uh, but then after the uh, long came along the long rifle, and I believe that one was uh, in 1884 when it was released. Now, if I had a uh, 22 long, now please do not confuse that with the long rifle. They're both completely different. And, I'll, and right now, I'm going to go over the differences. If I had one right here to show, right here in the middle, you will find that the uh, that the casing itself would would match the length of the uh, of the 22 LR. However, the bullet would be even smaller. Now, I believe the bullet size would actually be about the same size as a 22 short, considering the fact that both of them are actually the same in, in uh, diameter. Uh, 
Uh, now, all three of these, all three mentioned can actually be fired from the um, Heritage Rough Riders 22LR cylinder. Just, just fine, no problem. Uh, but I really uh, think that it would be uh, important that I at least mention that even though the Heritage can shoot those three different 22 rim fires, uh, not every single gun chambered in 22 LR can fire the 22 short or the 22 long. Uh, yeah, please always read your manual first and verify that it's safe to do so. I do not know which guns can and which guns cannot, so and I'm not going off to tell you like this one or that one or you should get this one because this one can't shoot these and this one can't, etc. Oops, sorry. Uh, but yeah, uh, on, on the side of the Heritage, it does not uh, state that uh, 22 short or 22 long can safely be fired from it, which a lot of guns actually uh, have it stamped right there on the barrel near the receiver. But the, the Heritage, or at least the one that I have, does not imply that or indicate that at all. But the manual says that it is safe and can and these other two can be fired from the 22 long. Now, there's actually more to it. Uh, now this one did not come with a 22 magnum cylinder, but you can order one and uh, switch out the barrels. As a general rule of thumb, you cannot shoot a uh, 22 magnum out of a gun that's chambered in 22 LR and vice versa. Now I don't really know a whole lot about the 22 magnum except that it came out in 1959, which was just over a century since uh, the 22 short was uh, released. And uh, it is significantly longer in length uh, when you compare it to a 22 LR. The uh, diameter is slightly bigger as well, and it is more powerful. Uh, I do believe it is becoming a little bit more uh, popular, and there's actually a few modern-day firearms that are indeed chambered in the uh, 22 Magnum. Uh, while we're on the topic of... Uh, switching cylinders though, uh, you do have an option for uh, getting a 9 shot, even though it's pretty standard for a revolver to have 6 shots, such as this one. But I do not know for sure if you can actually swap out the barrels, or I mean the cylinders, and, uh, and go from a 6 shot to a 9 shot. I mean, it seems possible, what knowing that you can uh, switch cylinders, but when I read the manual, it says only six shot cylinder will work in six shot gun, only nine shot cylinder will work in nine shot gun. Bit of a bummer, but my guess, I don't know why for sure, and I'm not a gunsmith or an expert, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but my guess is since uh, this gun is designed with uh, certain features and a uh, certain design. Uh, it's set up so that every time the hammer is cocked, the uh, cylinder bore is uh, uh, directly in line with the uh, hammer and the firing pin. Now if you were to uh, switch that up and uh, put a nine shot cylinder in there, my guess is the hammer would, would strike the firing pin and it would miss the round altogether and it'll It'll uh, do some damage and dents on the uh, cylinder. And considering that this is a uh, rim fire, you don't ever want to dry fire them because you can ruin them that way and render them useless. The nice thing about the Heritage Rough Rider is that it's a budget gun. I bought this one at Bymart for $130 before the pandemic hit. Uh, you can find them that will cost even more than that, and especially if it has a uh, bigger bore, which is chambered in a bigger bore. And uh, my thoughts on this one, I have not had any kind of issues with it. Uh, it's, it hasn't jammed on me, it hasn't misfired, and everyone else whom I know who has one hasn't had any issues with it as well. And I haven't heard any anything negative about it in general. I mean, some people might frown down on the fact that it's a, a budget gun, but uh, it's really nice just to have something readily available if you need a task done. I mean, it's very good to plink with, to target practice, and it's also really uh, handy when it comes to uh, 
teaching a new shooter how to shoot. I mean, because it's a, it's a 22, it's got uh, virtually no recoil, and uh, it's fairly easy to operate or handle. And uh, because uh, it's not a very fast repeating gun, and it doesn't carry as many shots as like maybe a Ruger 1022 with a banana clip, uh, you're less likely to just want to shoot just for the heck of it and uh, in the process just waste ammo instead of actually learning how to shoot. I mean, I'm not going off to say that Ruger 1022 is a bad gun or you shouldn't use that to teach somebody how to shoot. You know, I'm just I'm just saying it's better to target practice and uh, reduce the uh, risk or the temptation of just wasting ammo simply because it's there, it's available, and you just want to have fun instead of actually learning how to shoot a gun. Uh, and my personal thought too, because it's a uh, revolver, you're gonna have a, you're more likely gonna have fewer problems than you would a semi-automatic, since the revolvers have a, a reputation of being less likely to jam up. Uh, and I'm not trying to discredit semi-automatics to say that they're terrible. I mean, last I checked, more people uh, purchase semi-automatics than they do uh, revolvers, and I actually own a few myself, so that definitely says something. Uh, however, though, if, uh, if a young shooter were to start out with something like this, it's, it's fairly heavy, you know, and if they're not used to holding something out, you know, they could definitely have a hard time, uh, uh keeping it steady or straight and actually hitting the target. Uh, so what they can do in order to remedy the situation is they could definitely, uh, use both hands as support, or they could even just, uh, or they can just find something to uh, keep it steady on, so that they can take careful aim. You know, so, that, so even though even though that might be uh, an only negative side that I personally see to heritage, um, it's definitely not a deal breaker in my opinion. I really enjoy this gun, and I have no regret purchasing it. Uh, you can also use it to get the job done when it comes to taking out varmints at a closer range. You know, just a very easy, quick, accessible gun right there, ready to be used, and it doesn't cost that much. So anyway, that's all I wrote, and I uh, hope you found this video informative. Take care, stay safe.